would like to call the June 23rd uh, Blackstone Millville Regional School Committee meeting to order. If we could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. And I'd like to please stand in a moment of silence in memory of Aldo, Aldo Chakey, who has served uh, the Blackstone Millville Regional uh, School Committee in, in various roles, and we want to um, acknowledge his passing and a moment of silence. Thank you. We'll do introduction of members. Harry Larkin, Milvo. Charles Dunson, Blackstone. Uh, Harry Goddard, Blackstone. Dan Keith, Blackstone. Tammy Lemmy, Blackstone. Aaron. Aaron Ganasso, Milvo. And Jason DeFalco, Superintendent. Thank you. Um, we would, I would like to uh, consider consent agenda A, warrants in the minutes of meeting of June 9th, 2022. A motion? Motion to approve both at the same time as that we do both at the same time. Yeah. Motion to approve of warrants and minutes. Second. Uh, we'll vote. Uh, <laughs> Ayes. Aye. 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 Nays. And abstain. Aye. Okay. And we will move to public forum. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak to the school committee? We will move to school committee items. The first item is the district strategic plan uh, blueprint 2.0. Welcome our team, team of folks. Esther is back already. <laughs> Esther thought she was retiring, but here she is. Oh, they do it? You bring more chairs. You can. We love it, oh, Esther. We love it. <laughs> We're here cheering. All right. Can I um, just take a minute to introduce our Thank you. wonderful team that is joining us today? Uh, many of you have had the opportunity to work with us. So this is what we did. The person being is probably going to be need, need to be there. Yeah, whoever is, we'll have to talk to the mic. Whoever is. Um, most of you know Carrie. Even our new members have met Carrie virtually. She was about this big on a computer screen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we kind of moved her around the best we could. Um, of course, we know Miss Fallis, Miss Cody, who retired for four seconds, Miss Schaefer, Dr. Remka, and Mrs. Keene. Uh, so we have been hard at work, as the school committee knows, on developing our new strategic plan, uh, what we are calling our District Blueprint 2.0. And uh, just this afternoon, had a, some time with our uh, instructional leadership teams across the school district to celebrate all of their hard work and prepare for our launch in the fall uh, with all of this. And so uh, this evening, the school committee is going to uh, do a bit of a deeper dive into the plan itself. And I know that many of you had an opportunity to actually get your hands in this and work with this alongside of us, which was fantastic, uh, because we are hoping for, um, at the end of this, an approval because tomorrow at 8 a.m. we are starting to build the action plan um, as a result of uh, the approval we hope this evening. So with all of that, I'm going to turn it over to you, Carrie. Thank you so much for being here and for all of your hard work, time, effort, and energy. It is a pleasure. It is a pleasure. I feel like now I'm back to my friends, but all right. <laughs> so thanks so much for having us tonight, and thanks for joining us in this journey. So I think we first started having this conversation in the fall uh, with you all and started thinking about what do we mean by this idea of a blueprint and aligning all of our work in one direction. And because of these fine people behind me as well as a whole lot of other people, we have got to a place where we have a fantastic blueprint that will serve as the guide 
for the work moving forward. The intended, one of the intended outcomes of our conversation with you tonight is to bring you up to speed on where we're at today. And as Jason said, we're hopeful that you will uh, vote this in as our North Star, so to speak, so that tomorrow promptly at 8 a.m. we can start thinking about, okay, now so what, now what? So that's our purpose tonight is to bring you up to speed on where we're at right now, have some amazing leaders that are behind me sort of unpack this because this is their story not mine. I was just the lucky one that got to facilitate the conversation. So what you have, I believe, in your packet is what we think is Blueprint 2.0. And how this actually works is it really tells a story. So if you start at the top of the Blueprint where it says the Charger Way, that serves as our vision. Like that's what we hope for every student that comes to Blackstone Millville Regional School District. And then underneath the vision, we have what we call the five C's, which are connected to one of Ms. Fallis's favorite things in the whole wide world. And that is the portrait of a graduate because the portrait of a graduate describes for us what we hope our students who cross the graduation stage of BMR will have instilled in them so that they can go on and have this wonderful, amazing life that they've dreamed of having. So we're gonna equip and empower them around things such as character, citizenship, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking. Because we believe when we do those five C's, they'll be ready for anything. So right there in the middle, you're going to see our promise. Lots of people call this a theory of action, like if the grown-ups do this, then we can expect the students to do this. Uh, we like to call it our promise because we promise when we drive into the parking lot every day that we're going to do right by our students because we want to make sure that 100% of them are afforded an opportunity to do whatever, um, whatever they dream of doing because anything is possible. So just having all of those words isn't going to get us anywhere. And so underneath that promise, you're going to see four pillars. And those four pillars represent the what. Like, well, what do we have to do to make this happen? What is our work about as a unified district? What is our work about for the 2,000 plus students that we serve? And so those four buckets are curriculum, instruction, making sure we're taking care of the whole child and the community. So underneath of that, we've written these sort of lofty goals. These are goals that we hope to achieve by 2025. And should you approve this blueprint tonight, tomorrow we'll get started backwards mapping that. So, okay, well, if that's where we wanna be in 2025, where do you wanna be in 2024, 2023, 2022? Let's figure that out and get going. So that's the work that's ahead of us because right now this is just words on a piece of paper. It's what we do with those words on paper that are going to get us results and traction. So I talk fast. For those of you who've worked with me, you know that. Um, any questions before I turn it over to the real heroes in this room and that's our, our leaders. All right, so one of the things that's really important to Dr. Del Falco and quite frankly to, to everyone who works in Blackstone Millville is making sure that the work connects. Because I was saying earlier today in public education, we are famous for doing 6,225 things, none of which really connect to each other, but we are busy, right? But we're not busy being focused on that one thing. And so Mrs. Keene is going to come up here uh, as, a, as a classroom teacher, a grade five teacher, and sort of talk to you about how all of this stuff really points back to the main thing, and that is serving all students all the time, every day, every classroom, every school, all means all. So, Mrs. Keene. I'm just Mrs. King's well, secretary. Oh, she's the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and I don't think you need the clicker, but I'll leave it right here. Thank you so much. Yeah. you do. Yeah. Um, so obviously here is a visual of the work that's being done and how it's going to connect through um, all aspects of every school within the district. Um, the first being obviously the Blue Bread, moving to Portrait of the Graduate, which I myself was lucky enough to be a part of um, the Portrait of the Graduate Committee as well. 
um, and the work there, moving into school improvement plan, which is basically what our leadership team does at every school every day, um, then honing it into instructional focuses that are really targeted instruction that is supporting the kids in moving this work forward. And then obviously the teaching and learning that's happening in every classroom across the district. Um, what really speaks to me in this is the all means all in the middle. Um, when we first started talking about that, it was all means all, like I took it to really mean my students, every single student every day. But the more I see this, for me, it's not just all means all in terms of the students, it's everybody, it's community members, it is administration, it is staff, it's everyone working together to make sure that when the children graduate and they leave us, they have all of those pillars that we spoke about in the last slide so that they're ready for college, career, community, wherever they go after here, and that we've made them the best possible person that they can be. And when Carrie was talking about the story, the story just go around and around because we actually, you know, the, all the schools is currently planning on working on our school improvement plan. We're having the blueprint and also the portrait of graduates. It's really making it easy for us because we just work backward and looking at the blueprint and okay, how, it's really important for Christina's school too, because the preschool, we start with the preschool. If we wanna get to where the portrait of graduate, we need to start from the preschool. And then we have to think backward. What do we do to, you know, work? Drive it forward. Drive all the kids. And I remember on my own orientation day, four years ago, Dr. DeFalco came and he spoke about um, his valedictorian and like how that they wanted to support her to be able to make, you know, have whatever choice she had wanted at her disposal. Mm -hmm. And it, that didn't start at the high school that I really took that to heart. Like, oh my goodness, I'm getting these kids ready not only for fifth grade, but I have a part in a hand of where they're gonna be upon graduation. And that for me was my buy-in, mm -hmm. knowing that the work that I'm doing right now, we have goosebumps, is really gonna drive these kids sure. forward. And you see it because you see them building upon it. And like, we're making them problem solvers now. Like they've got those skills in place and you see how it just grows upon it every year and it's happening. And I think we have the connections all the time at, you know, whether we're in ILT or we're with the portrait of graduate, you hear something that goes to another piece of this puzzle and you're like, oh, we're doing that, it's happening. So it really is, you know, not stages, but a constant circle that's flowing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay. Thank, you Thank you so much, Mrs. Kane. Don't go anywhere, Dr. Brown. Yes. Oh, is this your okay. secretary? She's my secretary. Oh, my secretary. <laughs> All right, so the next piece said, is to really help you understand what's next and hold us accountable to what's next. Like we said earlier, um, tomorrow we hope to start really rolling up our sleeves and defining what this work looks like. But there's some other pieces and parts to this. So Dr. Remka and Mrs. Mrs. Fallis are gonna sort of unpack that for us. I think tomorrow's a big day for us. Well, as long as you say yes. <laughs> no, no pressure. <laughs> there you go. Just joking. Um, one of the things that we're really looking forward to is we have the leadership team coming together um, uh, off-site to really start digging into the so what, now what. Um, and we're very excited to have this very clear focus and where we're going. Um, that portrait of the graduate work will, for the high school, is already solidified. We have our steps. The exciting part is going to see what that looks like at the middle school level and at the complex and with our little ones. Mm -hmm. So our, our vision is that you could click on character and see how, where they started and where they'll finish mm -hmm. and, and have that continuity. And so this is part of the work that we'll be doing. Um, and then starting with that July 1st date, like um, Jenny said, that's our school improvement plan. That is what our focus is going to be. And everything is going to be driving in one clear direction. And that's not just the high school. It's every school. We're going to eat, sleep, and breathe this piece. So by the time they get to the high school, they'll be like, yeah, 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 we know the pillars of the graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carriage, <laughs> carriage. And it, and it just, but it's because it's going to be so, it's just going to be part mm -hmm. of the nature mm -hmm. of BMR. And I know Carrie showed you a couple of slides before with the goals for each pillar. You know, the instruction at the uh, curriculum and the instruction, whole child and the community. When we met as a school improvement team, mm -hmm. ILT team, leadership team, and we look at those goals. Okay, from those goals, how do we set our school improvement goal to reach those goals? Yeah. So it's kind of when I mentioned earlier, working backward. So it's really building that 
vision, you know, the outcomes, and now we have to do the work mm -hmm. to make sure we reach those. And you get to hear all about it. <laughs> <laughs> So we get to come back and spend more time with you and give you updates on what is it that we're doing and how this is impacting um, our school and our community and um, really the vision and, and moving us forward. Um, I know I, the joke is that I am the portrait of the graduate like spokesperson, but I re like it mm -hmm. means a lot to me that everyone in the building knows that the decisions that we're making are rooted here. And you can go back and look at the decisions that we're making and say, mm -hmm, yep, okay, here you go. We need to deal with this uh, athletics facility because this is part of this, and we can go here. And this curriculum because this comes here. And this social emotional program because it is rooted here. Mm -hmm. um, and that's gonna make decisions. And if it's not, it's an easy decision. Uh, that doesn't it speak to our values. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's a would like to, but it's not a necessity. And when you go to Jason's office going up the ramp, you see one of the pictures of one of my kindergarten kids with the cap, yeah. the purple cap. The other day I walk up there, I'm like, that's portrait of graduate. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Start from there. With the little ones. Yeah, with the little ones. And then at the end, you know, not only we want to give you an update, we want to hold ourselves accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we put all this work in, you know, implement the action plan. How do we hold ourselves yeah. accountable? Because they're just words. Yep. Who's next? Good job, Jim. Yay! <laughs> Are they like kind of incredible people, right? <laughs> they're just awesome. All right, so now comes the time for questions, answers, et cetera, before we turn it back over to you to think about, oh, this is something we can live with for the next few years. Is this good for kids? Tim, can I serve? Oh, sure. Question, uh, Carrie, uh, the last piece that uh, Ms. Fallis and Dr. Umka were talking about regarding the monitoring, mm -hmm. so the idea is that we would have a monitoring team. That's right. That would look at the goals quarterly and would look at the results of whatever those uh, actions kind of outline that That's show right. progress towards or not. Yes. And, and would give updates on that. Absolutely. Um, and like the uh, steering committee, that group would be comprised of all different stakeholders in the building because everyone's voice does matter and count. Uh, and I think when I was on that little square uh, on the computer screen and being passed around, um, one of the things we talked about was student voice and how important that was in this process and how we don't want to lose that. And that was a big thanks to Ms. Fallis and the power of that voice really helped us to create what we believe is a blueprint that serves them. Look, I was going to wait, raise my hand. I forgot I'm in charge today. <laughs> I'm so used to um, I just want to say one of the things that I see when I, and, and we've looked at drafts of the yes. um, blueprint and the, um, the goals. And when I'm looking at it tonight, I'm thinking about, you know, I see the collaboration within the five C's there. And then I look down at the community and we talk about growth, of, and growth by strengthening partnerships across, you know, Blackstone and Millville communities. And one of the things I would love to see, and I don't know where it fits in, into this, is sort of some component of a required service learning at the high school level. Um, again, I, I just think as we're building these partnerships, and I am, am part of the community, I've volunteered since BIPO days with Mrs. Cody. Um, I, I think that is part of what has to be part of this um, you know, when we talk about parks and recs always looking for people, like it should be our kids that are volunteering there to, to mentor those younger ones. And I, I just see that thread within here and I think I'm hoping we can fit that in somewhere in the future because I, um, it just seems to fit right in here. Yeah. So I thank I, you for sharing that. Yeah. Thoughts, yeah. process. It takes a village and all means all and we're better together, right? And so the more we can have those kinds of opportunities, the better and stronger that we will become. Absolutely. At, if I may, that's what I, that's all. I, that's really 
when the focus went out, was on all means all, and the fourth pillar being the community is 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 that final, you know, in my opinion, uh, that all means all that it's it's open for the village for the community, and that I think that's that that's huge, and 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 like Tammy was saying this. To, to, I've always advocated for more interaction with the, the district and, 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 the, and the towns, uh, and because you know we are all stakeholders, all the residents in both towns, whether they're parents or you know they're all contributing to this uh, this entity, which is you know, and, and and the product that comes out of this entity. I don't mean to you know. No, you understand. But is is yeah. you know the more involvement, the better. The, the result and the first three pillars is all on pretty much the administration yeah. <laughs> teachers but it, like you said it takes a village so yeah. yeah I think it's wonderful and we intentionally visually had them touching one another because they can't stand alone right all four of those pillars have to be linked um, in order for this to work one goes off the work starts to crumble so thank you for saying that but my first thought with Tammy's comment was, in Millville specifically, there was the Baisley boys that stepped up and did a lot during the winter uh -huh. um, as far as helping elderly in our community and helping others in our community that couldn't shovel or couldn't move snow, yeah. et cetera. And they really, I mean, they made it on the news. They made it, it was huge. But they weren't doing it for that purpose. They were doing it because they wanted to give back. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think that the blueprint and the the grounding principles of what you guys are instilling in our kids is guiding them in that direction oh that's so good to hear yeah. and it's going to make the world a better place isn't it right right yeah when i was a kindergarten teacher there was a book that said when you're ready to cross the street just hold hands and stick mm -hmm. together and that really is what it's about it's keen you can speak you just have to come close oh excuse me she's raising her hand but they oh, won't I'm be sorry. able to hear you here. I'm i was sorry. gonna say i thank you for saying that i was actually two of my students were involved in that and we talked so much about in my classroom about being problem solvers and what does it mean to be a member of the community and having that community connection because what you hope is you know not only do they go off to college or career but you hope that they, you're creating a place where they want to live that they want to come back to and that they're going to be pillars within their community someday so it is happening at those lower grades and to hear that they're being recognized as members of the community is like so awesome so you're hoping that that continues and and they come back and you know they're sitting in these seats and they're volunteering someday so yeah. Yeah. thank you for sharing that people in millville are actually reaching out to them to hire them and oh. give money to them for mowing lawns and clearing brush and yard work and other side projects um so it's, it's really a good thing for millville but it's a great thing that those kids did it on their own yeah and they were so proud of themselves like one particular because i was on zoom last year and he would come in and just for the sheer joy of it like that's oh. they just did it for the, you know helping out community members exactly so it starts in definitely the younger grades as well. It absolutely does. Yeah. Mr. Dumpton. So I'm just wondering if there's more. <clears throat> so I apologize if I'm not up to date and up to speed with this whole blueprint. Yeah. I'm fairly new. Yeah. And uh, so is there like something, a uh, curriculum that goes along with this blueprint that you're following? That so you, you have things stated out here, and I hate to think that we've been getting it wrong all these years. My kids have come through the school system, turned out okay. That's right, absolutely. And, uh, so, yeah. So I'm just wondering if there's, uh, it, it seems like it's very important what we're voting on tonight. Huh? It's, you, and you're really pitching it, a good sales pitch. Oh. So <laughs> I, I'm not trying to, to uh, you're very enthusiastic. You put a lot of work into it, and I'm not. Well, of course I'm not. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just questioning in my own mind, and for anybody else that might be listening. Yeah, just, no, that's a really good question. So, really, the driver behind this are the people back here, Dr. Del Falco, the staff, the parents, the students, and all of you to say, how does this come to life? <coughs> These are just words on a piece of paper, uh, but they're going to be the North Star. Every decision Blackstone Millville will make is 
directly connected to, well, how is this going to support all students? Oh, wait, is it not going to support all? Well, how it? So that's how they'll make their quarter turns. This is just like a, um, you know, the, the colander that you put the vegetables in and, and rinse everything through. It's, it's the vetting place. In terms of any curriculum decisions, et cetera, that's something that the instructional leadership teams do. Can, can I of course speak to the, just to the curriculum question you asked because I, I think that's a that's a great question and I want to preface this with none of this is to say and neither the first strategic plan that we developed that the committee approved is to say that anything prior to that was bad or wrong no right the goal here is like I think for every organization is to do things better stronger deeper and in our work that includes the teaching and learning and so I'll give you a very concrete example with curriculum because that was the, the um, piece that you had mentioned. So we have put in place a very strong and robust curriculum revision and renewal cycle where we have allocated resources and the budget to it every year. We have a, we have a uh, content area that's up every year. So this year it's social studies. Uh, last year or next year it's social studies. This year it was math. The year before it was English. Prior to that it was science. So believe it or not, we're almost through a full like core uh, class cycle, which is pretty amazing. And so there is like a system that we built to make sure that the materials, resources, and curriculum that the students have and the teachers are using are aligned, up to date, all research based, and have proven track records for helping kids learn better, stronger, deeper. So it isn't to say that curriculum work prior was bad or wrong. We're just trying to do it better. Mm -hmm. does, that make, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah, okay. Good question. Can I comment on that? Of course. I was in a previous meeting where that very topic came up and they discussed how in the past it was done, like Dr. DeFalco said, not wrong, not incorrect, but this blueprint is helping to align the students or the portrait of a graduate from the very beginning of preschool to the end. So there's no real distinction or difference or the student doesn't feel a change from one school to the next when they move from elementary to middle school to high school. They know all, all up front where they're, where they're guided to. At least that's the impression that I got. I want to I want to jump in and just say something. I think for what we're doing now is more intentional. I think Joey would come and tell you that he would know some of these portraits of the graduate pillars because we've been working on them and critical thinking and all of these things are things that we have been doing. But now what we're saying is we're being really focused on saying this is the time that we're going to be looking at. When we did our, our student focus group, it was so powerful. They said, look, we're better critical thinkers. We need to learn how to communicate and work in groups. We were like blown away, you know, because of the COVID piece. And that's the feedback from the kids. So that's what the really the intentionality is behind that. And what's going to happen next is each school is going to take that and fill it out. So almost like that's the skeleton or the, the, or the rainbow and we're going to color it. Um, for, for all those things. But these are all things that we have been doing all mm -hmm. along. Mm -hmm. So it's not like anybody had been short, necessarily shortchanged. It's just now we're really focused in putting it all in one place and saying, instead of saying our focus has been crit critical thinking, now our focus is all of these things to make this whole kid. So that's all. Thanks. Why are you leaving so soon? Oh, because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I really didn't touch a thing. I don't know. I know. I just saw it out. I'm like, oh, we're now we're watching Apple TV. Um, <laughs> Other questions? Hi, it's Erin. I just want to add, um, just for the members that were asking, you know, what the direction of this is. It's not even something new for us. It's just. Um, updating you know we've been working with the blueprint for several years and this is just updating the direction for our district and i i sincerely appreciate all the time and effort put into this from the entire group i'm sorry that i can't see you right now but i just wanted to personally thank you all for all of the efforts and getting this to where it is today thanks aaron any other questions and so this is an action item and so um, is there consideration to um, 
approve the district strategic plan blueprint 2.0. Madam Chairman, I make a motion to accept the district strategic plan blueprint 2.0. Second. As, as presented. Thank you. Uh, motion made by Dan, seconded by Aaron Z. Any discussion? Further discussion? Um, I just want to say, I just want to um, second what Aaron said and just thanking people. I know how much work goes into this. Um, and so thank you everyone that has been part of it i know you're just a bit of who uh, formulated the plan so thank you um we will vote all those that say yes i don't know all this, those in favor aye uh, aye 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 any nays and any abstain does anyone abstain so the motion passes. Great. Thank you. Now you have work to do tomorrow. <laughs> Time to get to work. Congratulations. <laughs> 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 Refilled, we would, have, <laughs> would have reset the agenda. <laughs> Thank you for your time, everybody. Thank you. Thank Rest up. The next agenda item is uh, consideration of the wellness policy, policy ADF. This is uh, a policy that has come before us previously. And uh, I'm just trying to remember. Sorry. That's okay. we, uh, we included in the packet the ADF, the new um, unpaid meal charges policy at the committee's request. And we just, just so you'd have it, we included the updated wellness protocols and procedures. Okay. I know we only vote the policy, but I thought it'd be helpful for the committee to have the updated. And I did invite, um, if it's all right uh, yes. with you, Madam Chair, I did invite our food service director, Maureen Gonzalez, if she wants to come yes. to the front in case there are any questions. Please. We would, <laughs> all the way up here, <laughs> near the microphone, please. Was there a part in here that we were, oh, it just referenced yes, something else, it did. right? It referenced the, um, the, it referenced the unpaid meal charge policy, so we made okay. sure we actually wrote the policy to match okay. the, uh, but it's the Thanks. same language, frankly, and I, it's highlighted in the, um, in policy ADF, and if I, one minute I can find the page it's on. The second page of the Oh, is it page two? Twelfth packet. Okay, it was <laughs> <in>. <laughs> I know. Meal charge. Yes, uh, you're right, Tammy. Uh, Tara, thank you. It's in the um, wellness procedure protocol and procedures, oh, oh, okay. the unpaid meal charges. Okay. So we wrote the, um, if the committee recalls at the last, we talked about uh, writing the meal charge policy to match the language in the uh, updated protocols and procedures. So this will be need a number of some, a letter yes. of some sort. And I didn't number it uh, or letter it because I wasn't sure if. We wanted to attach it to ADF and have like a, an ADF A. Is that how it? <laughs> uh, I will have right? to ask Mask. Yeah. Because they so. MASC is very specific about their lettering of policy, so we'll confirm that. But it okay. it will be okay. I can find that out. So I am going to open discussion on ADF first because the other one will be a separate policy, maybe an A, but it's still separate in its, um, in its intent. So um, anybody has any, you know, ADF, again, we held it the last time just because it connected to the other um, two pieces that weren't quite done. So um, for me as a policy chair, I support ADF and bring it to you all for approval as written. Um, you were just missing these other pieces, so. Anyone have any? Do you want a motion so that we can have the, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion by Tara, second by Kerry. 
Any discussion on uh, ADF district <coughs> wellness policy? Hearing no discussion. Oh, Maureen. I mean, <laughs> we, we talked about it so much, so I'm like, do you have anything? I don't have any questions. <laughs> well, you guys created this last it's been year or the it's been before process, COVID. Yeah. It was before COVID, and then we adapted a little. Right. Yeah. And what always hangs us up is this piece, which yeah. is like two sentences. Yes. We didn't. We've never really had an issue with this because you all pulled together all the regs and the 14 references that you have on the last page. <laughs> Um, any questions or concerns that maybe Maureen can help us on the ADF piece? So is this unpaid meal charge policy, this little one, in here now? Is that what we're... No, it's going to be separate it's because be separate. it's part of the wellness protocols and procedures okay, that so references it. That's why I kind of separated them. Okay. And that's potentially a dash A... Ish. <laughs> I didn't label it that way because I wasn't Small sure. Small I that. once removed. I'm not sure. What so on the agenda, we put wellness policy because I, I wasn't sure if we were going to do ADFA, but the other you, you see is ADF. So we, I put both because I wasn't. Okay. We have to get clarity on how do we. So is there any discussion on ADF district wellness policy document? So let's take a vote on that. Um, how do we usually All those in favor. favor. All those in favor. Thank you, Dan. I'm like, what are the no. wording for that? <laughs> I've only been doing this five years. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Aaron. Um, nays? Any abstentions? Okay, so that is good. Perfect. The wellness protocols and procedures is not a policy, so we don't have right. to vote on that piece. However, it then connects to the unpaid meal charge policy, which, as written, indicates all students will be provided a reimbursable <clears throat> meal. A la carte items are not allowable regardless of unpaid meal balances. Any available funds will be applied to unpaid balances only and may not be used for a la carte items. Parents, rather than students, will be contacted directly regarding unpaid charges. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? And Tammy, if I may, yes. um, in the wellness protocols and procedures, this replaces that whole section on unpaid balances. Yes. Okay. Which then has to be replaced on the the web on the food nutrition yeah. right. page yeah. of I the web page yeah. as well. So eventually, we'll all catch up. Once it gets approved, we'll clean it all up and get the right <laughs> okay info posted. I just, oh, were we not doing this before? Uh, what was happening, uh, so this goes back, Erin, uh, I, I, this is my sixth year on the committee. It was right before I got here. Um, there was, what was happening prior is A, uh, the lunch personnel would ask the students for the money. Like, you know, you have an unpaid balance of $50, you know, do you have it? And if they didn't have it, what, the policy, what happened at that point was that they would get an alternate lunch. So they might get a sun butter, I don't even know what this is, but sun butter sandwich, is that what it was? Yeah, cheese sandwich or? A cheese sandwich, but I think this, I, a cheese butter. sandwich to me is a grilled cheese, not grilled, so that was okay to me. <laughs> but the sun butter, I don't even know what that is. You'd be surprised so, how many kids love that sun butter. I know, I like the sun butter. You would be butter. shocked. <laughs> we go through a lot of it. <laughs> um, so that was what was happening. So the friend in front could get a pizza, but the second kid didn't ha had an unpaid balance, so they were allowed, they only could get a sun butter bag lunch or something. Okay. And so at that point, the committee took issue with that for various reasons, and yeah, we 
discussed a policy, but it never quite made it to the actual manual. That's why we're. Thank you. But the issue becomes what what the what we didn't want to happen. So pre-COVID, I think at the end of the, the year there was like a balance of maybe eight thousand or something there was a large amount of money well, yeah. that yeah. was unpaid and so the question is how do you recoup that and um, so that became part of the other side of things so that's the his history Aaron do you have anything to add there she might have left still no? no I'm still here okay um, the history of it was that we ended up the end of the year with a huge deficit and the kids were still being a being allowed to purchase items with cash. So the, the old policy went into place. Hold it, the, the one that was illegal was in efforts to not allow, to get people to pay their balances at the end of the year. Um, and I believe the sun butter is a peanut free peanut butter, right? <laughs> Did someone say that and I didn't hear it? Maybe. No, we just, I just know that that was a thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that uh, the other the other part that Aaron just re referenced was that part of the big policy that was created at that time was if you had an unpaid balance you could get your diploma, which <laughs> was illegal. <laughs> which was illegal. So we had to change we that as to well. Clear that up. Gotcha. Loud and clear. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> so um, any other discussion on the unpaid meal charge policy? as written. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Okay, so that is, and we'll just determine, I will check in with MASC to see what how that should be lettered, and then we'll make sure we get it out so that it's updated wherever. That sounds perfect. Thank you. All right, everybody keep their copies of this so when we ask about it in three years, <laughs> you remember what happened today. Thank you. Thanks, Maureen. Next on the agenda is school safety. And uh, we talked about this a little bit at our last meeting, increase of, a possible increase of school resource officers. Uh, if it's okay, if I could provide the committee with a brief update sure. from our last conversation. And the committee had discussed um, just briefly um, the idea around increasing school safety. We talked a lot about our hardware. We talked about our you know, trainings for students and staff. Um, we have since actually had our training, uh, which went very well with our school, high school community. Um, and we then had a brief discussion uh, just for those of you tuning in at home that maybe didn't catch the last meeting where we talked a little bit about how to uh, you know look at or think about um, increasing our, our school resource officers if, if possible and so the committee had uh, tasked me with going back to have a discussion with the chiefs um, which I did do um, and we've actually had quite a few conversations and we discussed a few different models and options um, that we as a committee probably need to discuss further at some point um and i don't know if we want to do it in this venue or yeah if, if i may um uh, <clears throat> if if we're if we're going to discuss options of safety of the um or different options of whether it's you know unless it's short of a resource officer at every school i would think that the security that we would have an executive session uh, regarding this for the options so that it's more or less kept within the uh, within the the, the, the school committee and, and uh, for the purposes of a variety of different options that we may go along with so okay so you're asking to table so it I would for actually, executive yeah, so session I guess I would make official make a motion to table it and, and have a uh, set a later date for an executive session to discuss um, the options that the district would have. I second that. Uh, we have a second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Nays? 
Any abstentions? Can we ask that the details of the different scenarios or options be brought to that executive session or given to us to make? Yeah. So that's what we'll, yeah. And, and under the, the premise of it's school safety and we don't want to. Right. I would it. actually ask to invite the resource officer and chiefs of both communities uh, at that, if we could coordinate it. Okay. Thank you. Could you, Dan, could you just, I, or someone repeat that that's closer to the phone? Did he just say he wanted the chief and resource officer in the session? Yes, to see if the school resource okay. officer and chiefs could be present. Okay. We have a. I just had trouble hearing him. We have a meeting on July 11th. So if the committee would like, we could put the executive, the executive session on July 11th. And actually, I think the meeting itself is going to be fairly short. There'll be a couple of updates, and then Ron um, and I will have some discussion about closing out the books for FY22. Um, and then we can move into an executive session to talk about the school safety options. If no. that's, is that how you'd like me to structure that? Well, because ideally, any decisions we make, we would like to be able to roll out for the upcoming school year, I would right. imagine. so. And Dan, I think to your point, to st and, and that is one of the 10 areas that we can hold an executive, the committee can hold an executive session around, which is school safety, so that the committee can have some frank conversations and kind of tease out some different options. And, and Aaron, uh, Aaron Z, to your point, I can put together some different scenarios that could look at different possibilities and financial pieces to that and see if the chiefs can be there and SROs and if, if that sure. works for the committee. That would yeah. be great. Aaron, are you okay with that? Yes, that's fine. Because, um, yeah, that's fine. Great. Okay. Thank you. And now we move to the report of the superintendent. Great. Thank you. Um, a formal good evening, everybody. Good to see all of you. And then we kind of just uh, jumped right in. Um, I just have a few things under my report, uh, but I'll also be doing the business office uh, report. So I'm going to kind of roll right into that. Uh, but I want to start by introducing to some of you, and Ron, if you want to join us, reintroducing you to uh, Ron Pierre Louis. He is our, um, our assistant treasurer. Um, definitely my right-hand man now. <laughs> I've talked to Ron more in the past couple weeks than probably in the past four years. Um, but I can tell you now, having worked so closely with Ron the past couple of weeks, he has been the brains behind the financial work. So we're very blessed to have him as part of our team and to have him here tonight. So I just want to make sure that people had a chance to meet Ron and see who's helping us with all the numbers behind the scenes. And Ron, if you want to just say a few things. How are you doing again? Um, thank you for having me. Um, I've been doing this line of work for almost 22 years now and uh, specializing with regional school districts and charter schools. Um, currently, as the assistant treasurer, what I do is on a monthly basis, I reconcile all the cash accounts and investigate any differences I might find between the bank statements and what we have in the accounting system, which is Infinite Visions. And on a quarterly basis, I submit a report, a cash report um, that I, that comes to the committee and gets presented at the committee. Um, in addition to that, I help close out the year um, and also help out with the audit process. I draft the um, all the reports for the DORs, uh, excess and deficiency numbers, and I also uh, draft the, the uh, DESE end of the year report. So usually around September is a very, very busy time. But, um, and um, so now with uh, the assistant superintendent position open, I'm gonna fill in to kind of just help out with more of the accounting duties, like um, approving purchase orders and doing a little more of investigative work as far as reviewing numbers and things of that nature. And just to add to that, just so the new members are aware, Ron actually works for the school committee as the assistant treasurer for the committee. Um, and Carrie, you serve as treasurer. Um, but and he gets so. to do all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie signs everything. Yep. Ron, so that, <laughs> but, I've been with the committee, I've been with the school since 2018, I believe. Yeah, yeah. When we started, yeah. which has been great. And uh, you've done a lot of really good work. We're very appreciative of that. And I'm super appreciative of your help the past few weeks 
making sure that everything's nice and steady and, and we've got all the numbers in order, the finances in order, we're gearing up now to close out yes. the fiscal year and roll over into a new one. So yes. um, really and appreciate it. I gotta say, there's a, you have a very good accounting team in place, yeah. both the AP, payroll, yeah. um, they're really knowledgeable and they really know their stuff. So um, the work that's done on the front end by them makes it a whole lot easier for the end process. So. Mm -hmm. um, and are we all up to date with all audits and stuff? I know at some point we were, we're like starting we were waiting back to hear. Are we all up, up to date? <laughs> they just got started with the 2020 audit. 2020 so, audit, okay. Correct. So hopefully they can put that into high gear and jump right into uh, 21. Oh, actually, they're starting the, the 2021. One, yeah, yeah, they're starting 21, yeah. Yeah. Say they're slow, but I, I thought they were a little quicker than. No, no, they are a little quicker. <laughs> this is the state DOR does the audit. No, this is the external auditors. External auditors. Okay. okay. I'm sorry for my ignorance. I know we had a little lesson on this at some point. What what do the the external auditors then rep give you a report to say this is what's good and what's bad what, what happens basically when they issue a set <laughs> of financial statements and they give an opinion on the fairness of the numbers that basically we provide to them we give them financial statements we say here here's our numbers this is what they are they audit it and they say all right yes this is accurate and okay. they also have to do some compliance testing with um, some federal dollars um, usually lunch and sped is the kind of two big areas they'll go in they'll pull files and just making sure um, all the policies and procedures as it relates to the different rules and regulations are followed okay. and they also issue an opinion on that as well okay and we get that rep we get that I feel like we've gotten yes, one in the Matt, past. Matt does um, usually in May or June, depending on the timeline and when the audit's done, he'll do an update to the committee, uh, sharing with the committee that the, the audit's been completed and then any findings. Uh, thankfully, we haven't had anything of any significance um, in the past, gosh, three, I think three audits. So we haven't, since we've had the different auditing. Since 2018. Yeah, we haven't had any. <laughs> says our assistant. <laughs> I went, maybe right, I was here before yeah. 2018 that I remember the letter. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we haven't had any significant findings. No, not at all. Okay, who, who is our external auditing firm? Um, is that something that we can? I don't recall their name off the top of my head, but we Rob, certainly could find Robert out. Brown. I yeah, think I think that's right. PC. Yeah. As we said, switched auditors a couple of years ago to a different. We had it started with one, Mr. Swenson, and I can't remember the other gentleman's name. That was my first year, and then we shifted to a different auditing, uh, auditing team, to try to get caught up. Yep. Okay. Ron, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Really Thank you. That it would just be important to make yeah. sure everybody uh, reintroduce you, yeah, to Ron and to our new uh, members. Ron. Um, I just want to give a brief update on where we are with the assistant superintendent search. Um, Jill, if you want to join us up front in case there are any specific questions, Jill uh, PG is chairing the uh, search committee. And to date, we've had 25 applications, Ms. PG? Yes, approximately 25. And we have a committee that is interviewing, uh, has started interviewing yesterday, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, that committee is comprised of school committee members, community members, um, members of our Unit A, so our teachers' um, bargaining unit, our uh, Unit B, which is our assistant principals, Unit C, which is all of our support staff. Um, so we have a pretty good cross central office. section, right, in central office. Um, so we have a good cross section of people that are on, that are screening the resumes, that are um, conducting the interviews. Yeah. And so right now we have. Uh, one individual that the committee moved forward, mm -hmm. um, I think it's the only one you've interviewed because the other interview was canceled yep. because it was a technology yep, issue. Yep. Okay. And so I'm meeting with that candidate next week. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we reposted today, if I remember correctly. We did. We reposted too, just to kind of make sure some other language was in there for the finance piece um, to make sure people really looking at what the 
position is that we're looking for. So the job description is not missing any language. It was the, the posting job description was, was not right. No. It was listed as assistant superintendent, and we assume people would click that and then read right. the job description. That was not happening. No, it wasn't. So people were just seeing assistant superintendent and applying. Yes. They weren't reading the job description. Not realizing that it had to do with the finance, the operations, the Personnel. HR piece. Yeah. And when they found that out, we had people who were like, eh, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Right. Well, you know, so. so we kindly suggested they read the description, yes. right? Yep. Before applying for the job. Yes. Just putting that out there. Yes. Anyone watching? Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. But it still is posted. Um, and, you know, we're just going to keep on, keep moving forward. When is the end date for the repost? So there's no, I won't say there's an end date. I mean, okay. right now it's open until it's filled. I mean, when we find the best candidate, um, hopefully it would be nice if it was by July 1, but we're not, we want to make sure it's the right fit. And we've had that discussion over and over in our committee that it needs to be the right fit, not just a deadline for the, for the time. But it is still posted, again, until it is filled. We have a, and just so the committee's aware, we have a structure in place uh, where myself, um, Scott, Jill, um, Monique, who does our, as our payroll specialist, Tina, who's our accounts payable specialist, and Ron, are just working very closely together on everything. So it's, it's taking longer to do things just because we have more, all of us have other responsibilities, obviously, um, but we've all grabbed a huge chunk of, um, of this work. Um, and so we have a structure in place until mm -hmm. we find the right person. And, and we've talked about this a few times. I, I just assume leave it open as long as we need to till mm -hmm. we find the right fit. I'm in no rush to fill this position mm -hmm. uh, if it's not the right person. So we have a good system in place until until we do that. Mm -hmm. so. okay. Perfect. Okay. No questions. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. Oh. <clears throat> Um, and then lastly, under my uh, report, I just wanted to give a quick update on where we are with our summer programming. Um, in your packet, you have a one-page overview. It's already outdated, frankly, and it just went in the packets on Tuesday um, because uh, we learned uh, yesterday afternoon that the Department of Education is uh, sponsoring the Acceleration Academies again this summer. Um, and it is a, uh, we have been, uh, told uh, in a separate email, but also in the actual posting for uh, applications, it is a highly competitive process this year. Last year it was competitive, this year it's highly competitive. That means something on the Department of Ed's end in terms of how they rank applications. Um, so I do think we're going to have a lot of competition. But um, as soon as it was released yesterday afternoon, we convened a meeting this morning, um, a small team of us, and have started writing the grant and we posted for the positions that we would need as anticipated, depending upon funding, of course. And that will actually run August 22nd to the 26th. So that full Monday through Friday, right before we start for the new school year. And it will focus on uh, kindergarten literacy, first grade literacy, second grade literacy, uh, third grade and fourth grade math, eighth grade math, and 10th grade math. And this is a real tight structure the Department of Education has released. So it's not that we made the decisions not to focus on the other grades. We, we are through our other programs. We just can't focus this academy on those other grades. If you're wondering why we left out the other students, uh, it's, it's the Department of Education is very clear about what grade levels and content areas are eligible for that. Um, we got very good feedback from families, students, and teachers when we ran this last year. Um, and what I really appreciate about this year's model is there is a focus on incoming kindergarten students. We didn't have that before. Um, so we finish our kindergarten screenings and the team at uh, Millville is already identifying who those students are that need to get in a week early uh, and get a jump start on K. So we're really excited about that opportunity. We'll see if we get the grant. Um, um, but uh, Dr. Remka and myself are gonna be actually writing the grant we collected all the information from the team this morning and we'll get to work next week and get that in place. We're thinking the request will be somewhere between 30 and 35,000, um, but it's fully funded from the Department of Education, so it won't cost the district anything. So I will keep the committee updated on that. Uh, the other pieces, we've talked about these before. I just wanna highlight a few things um, that are new and um, different. Um, one is the, um, 
athletic clinics. So uh, I do have an updated uh, clinic, athletic clinic, athletic clinic, excuse me, that sounded strange, uh, clinic form to send out to families. The, um, we uh, now have soccer and volleyball. I think the only team we're missing is football, I believe. So we have dates and times for the other sports. Um, I will say just from the email yesterday that I sent to families, and we only had two, I heard some just awesome feedback from parents that thought it was like a really cool thing to be able to drop their kids. They can go for a run, drop their kids. They can do, you know, soccer. They can do volleyball, you know, whatever, because I had all the sports on there. We just we were waiting. Um, some parents were asking some clarifying, like really good clarifying questions. Um, does my kid need running sneakers? Should they bring the water bottle? What are they going to need? Like, so you pay, it got attention. People really paid attention to it, which I thought was good. What I'm really excited about, though, I think uh, about this, and Chuck, this was your idea uh, to put this together, was the students are doing it, you know? Um, and the fact that the kids are going to be, the upperclassmen in particular, are going to be teaching the younger students some of these skills and drills and things for each of the sports, I just think is really cool. So I'm really glad that, uh, that this got some nice traction. And once I get the football uh, dates and times, we'll send it back out to families so they know. And it's, you know, no cost. There's no special form. There's parents can drop their kids at the date and time and the kids can work out with the upperclassmen and learn a little bit and have fun. Jason, um, sorry, I don't know. There, there is an option for fans as well. I don't know if it was included in your email yesterday. I haven't seen that. But um, I saw, I believe, in my middle schooler's Google classroom, um, the teachers had sent out, um, I believe they're doing it as a week long clinic for the kids. Did you share that information as well? Um, this is the first time learning of it, so no. I didn't know that we were doing that. Um, but I'm happy to connect with the band director and find out what's going on with that. I think that's awesome. It's a week-long clinic, you said, Aaron? I believe so. I thought it was put together with the um, extracurricular activities for the kids. Oh, I think it's great. I just didn't know we were doing it, but I'm happy to. I can send that information out along with the updated flyer for the athletics. Okay. I can um, send you what I saw from the Google the classroom that I saw it in. Yeah, that'd be, I, that'd be great. Um, and on that note, too, we, um, through some creative scheduling at the elementary school, we are going to be offering um, band for the first time to our fourth graders, uh, those that are interested. And we had 40 um, students show interest already which would be really nice to, to continue to get that interest and get students engaged and involved. And so a lot of, a lot of really good things happening. Jason, um, oh, do you please. Uh, mind if I interrupt? No, not at all. When you speak to the uh, band director, you should try to facilitate a friendship with the basketball coach and the football coach. And, tr and at other schools, they have the band, you know, plays at games at halftime or whatever. And... Um, that's I, we've been talking about that for years. When you go to Sutton, and they have <laughs> it's that. It's funny. I was like the Sutton pep band. Yeah, and, <laughs> they're so uh, loud. Oxbridge does it. Uh, and uh, but it adds such energy to the to the gymnasium. It's awesome. It adds to the atmosphere. It really does. Yeah. They have it. They have, have an advantage. The best band in the in the country. <laughs> we we're missing out. Yeah. I think Aaron's gonna answer yeah, a little bit about. So we have a marching band to the Complex. other schools that uh, I know exactly what you're talking about, Chuck, with yeah. Sutton, especially in the basketball season. Um, we would have to actually have another stipend position for a pep band. Um, it wouldn't be the marching band that would attend those functions. I mean, I personally think it's a great idea, but it is another. it would be another stipend position. Um, so that does come down to budgeting, unfortunately. That is why it isn't there. Um, Boosters. Have been in the past. Maybe the boosters uh, could happen. pick up, or some some organization help pick up that. Yeah. Uh, just by the gate, the numbers at the gate, you fill the gym up. We can pay for that easily. 
Yeah, that's I, a great I idea. definitely agree with you. I just wanted to sure yeah. notice that it isn't the marching band not wanting to participate in it. It's something that if it would actually, it could actually end up being another group of students. Um, and, and maybe kids that were not capturing in marching bands. So I think it's a great idea. There are some kids that don't want to go through the hundreds of hours of you know band camp and the May to November schedule, but. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to mention uh, is we there were about 12 or 13 of us that um, each selected a children's story and had Jesse uh, and Tim record us doing a read aloud so each week this summer we're going to uh, email out to parents why are you laughing <laughs> <laughs> do you want to i can send the story to you tammy that i read <laughs> i was just thinking we could all listen to you all like at, at bedtime story time <laughs> well that was the idea was to make sure that students in particular our younger students are staying uh you know kind of saturated in literature over the summer so uh, we all selected a, a children's book uh mine was hooray for you and um we took you know about a half hour, fifteen minutes or whatever, and read the story. Jesse recorded all of them, and then he sat with Tim, and they separated them out, so they're individual links. So for families that either can't or are not participating in any of these things, they can just click on a link uh, on their um, their iPad or you know on a computer and the or their phone, frankly, and the kid can have a little bedtime story read to them. Yes, that, <laughs> or a school awesome. committee member if they would like to. No, I just thought it was a cute idea. That's <laughs> yeah, all. For sure. Sandman Stories with Dr. DeFalco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could get a little creepy for the older kids. <laughs> can they be sent to us? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. I, we definitely can send them to Yep. Yeah, we are. I, I think like I think the gist of all this is we are trying really hard to keep everybody connected and trying to find something for everybody to engage with over the summer. Um, but this outlines the activities, the grade spans, um, and the dates that the programs are going to be running. Um, in addition, the credit recovery programs and enrichment programs also have transportation uh, connected to them that need that. Uh, and I'm really glad because those buses have filled up pretty quick in terms of the students that have needed the transportation. Um, you know, with parents working, it's hard to get to school from 9 to 11, you know. So we wanted to get that barrier out of the way. So we're uh, setting up bus runs now to make sure those will be set to go. It's a big barrier. It is, yeah. I'm glad we were able to get that, take that one down. Uh, and we're running the shuttles between the Boys and Girls Club, um, Millville Elementary, and the complex. So uh, students that are going to participate in Millville's program and or participate in the complex program, uh, we have a shuttle that actually is running a couple of times a day between the Boys and Girls Club, because there's almost 400 students that attend there, and half of which are ours. Um, so uh, those students load up on the bus, it shuttles them over to Millville, they do the Millville um, enrichment and academic work, they jump back on the bus, and it shuttles them back to the club. Um, and similarly with the complex. That way, actually it helps the club, frankly, because it brings the numbers down a little bit for sections of the day. Um, and it gets the students the opportunity to do the Boys and Girls Club, which some they have to because parents are working, right? Um, but it also gives us a chance to do the academic work that we need to do with them. So we get both bites of that apple. And will that run for the athletic clinics as well? Uh, no, okay. the athletic clinics are running at all different days and oh, times. Okay. Yeah, Some are in the morning, some are in the afternoon, early evening. So they're all a little different. Um, and uh, just putting out a pitch for this now, um, we are starting our uh, school supply and backpack drive. Um, we heard from families yesterday um, that were interested in helping and families that were in need of supplies and backpacks. So um, we are generating that list and putting out the uh, kind of all call to any family that needs a, a uh, backpack or school supplies to let us know and those that want to contribute uh, to do the same. And can they, where should they drop off items or send money? Um, the information is on the flyer. If you give me one minute, I, I can was tell you. Think it was at St. Paul's. Yeah, I think it was in one of the church. Yeah, was it was, was it St. Paul's? Yeah, because the other two are closing. <laughs> St. Paul's is going to be the new. Yeah, St. Paul's. Okay. okay. I won't bother. Sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. I couldn't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> I'm like yelling at Erin now. <laughs> I was going to check for the email, too. <laughs> okay, so St. Paul's. Yes, and the, uh, we're doing this in conjunction, our district social worker, in conjunction with St. Paul's. Okay. 
Uh, and that is it for my summer update, unless there are any other questions or thoughts on this. Tara, can you send us the flyer? And the countdown is on. There's 65 days till the start of the school year. Just so you know. <laughs> Who all, counts that we, down? We do. <laughs> I didn't even get a full three hours out of school yet. We get the countdown. We are back. counting it down until our <laughs> kiddos return. That is um, That is his Christmas. <laughs> So that finishes the report of the superintendent. Now we have the report of the business office. That is me. So let's Jason? roll right into that. Uh, we have a few things this evening to discuss that uh, will require action. Um, the first is a review of our small capital projects. Um, I know, Tammy, you served in this uh, committee, and I think others did as well. Um, so this certainly isn't new news to the committee, but we finally have all the information we need. And Scott, if you want to join us, up front if there are any specific questions. Um, but in your packet, you have an overview of the three um, projects that we are looking to move forward with in this fiscal year. Uh, so we can uh, encumber the money and start the projects as soon as tomorrow. Um, but the first is to update, uh, essentially repair and restore the three elementary school playgrounds, uh, the JFK playground, the AFM playground, and the playground at uh, Millville Elementary and you can see the cost estimates uh, next to the total cost uh, which would not exceed 60,000 uh, but it's looking as though we'll need about 25,500 for JFK uh, about uh, 3,500 for AFM and about 21,000 for MES and I can pause here and see if there are any questions or Scott can you provide us just an overview of what work is at each place like a very broad yeah so the biggest concern is the jfk playground um with this p-stone that's there it's not meeting ada compliance where if somebody falls off they can whack their head um there's lots of concrete sticking up and there's concrete where there shouldn't be concrete that's going to have to either be removed or they're going to lay a rubber mat over it and then put the wood chips on top of that um supposed to be at least 12 inches of wood chips and, and that the wood chips are ada compliant because i yes. thought that was an issue for us uh, that's what um pro built is select you know okay that's what yeah supposedly that's what they use on all the playgrounds i thought it was weird myself but i, I thought it was an it issue. was definitely an issue when we did melville uh, Aaron? do you remember what the issue was that the wheelchairs the can't wheelchairs get over can't the, do it. So ADA over the wood chips. Erin, are you still there? I am. However, um, I think I'll refrain from commenting. Okay. The, the, the wood chips were donated, and we were assured by the company that donated them that they were ADA compliant, but there were other other the wood chips might not have been processed properly no it's, the, no it's no. the fact that the wheelchairs can't wheel over them like without i thought i think that was the discussion 12 inches time. i mean that's 12 inches that's a lot of walk on i mean if you're have a hand manual wheelchair I, I so as long as we are sure that that's ada compliant yes i think it, that was the question when when millville was done to Aaron's point, things were donated, and immediately after, there was a big flare-up about the grounding. So when you, I heard rubber right. mats, I got excited. Then you said wood chips. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, so the rubber mats that are at Millville, we're going to reapply those after they put down the wood chips so that the wheelchairs can't get across them. But that wasn't mentioned for JFK or AF Maloney. Um, that's what they use on all their playgrounds, so I'm assuming it, it's well, compliant. We will double check everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. They are ADA yeah, the compliant. The company that installed them, what was the name you just said, Scott? ProBuilt. ProBuilt. Pro, Pro Sorry. I'm pretty sure that it's who donated them, and, so and they assured the town that they were ADA compliant. Yeah, there was paperwork, I think, that went along with it. I think the P-Stone's a lot worse. Because it's so, and it washes into the sidewalk there. Well, that that's the problem too. But trying to get a wheelchair through that, can't even, <laughs> yeah, can't even walk through it. As soon as you get into it, you stop. Yeah, I would think that's the same thing. Um, so that was at JFK Stone 
taking out the stone, the concrete, and putting 12 inches of wood chips. There's Correct. also some it's apparatus that need to come compact. down from that too. Right, there's the two tire swings that aren't being used anymore. Um, they propose removing those and building a retaining wall right off of the basketball court. So if you came through the AF Maloney corridor, or JFK, sorry, onto the play, uh, basketball court, oh, yeah, yeah. it would run straight out into the playground. Um, I don't know if Jason has the map or not. I don't have a map. And the tire swings aren't being used? There's nothing on them right now. Oh, okay. They were nope. taken down um, and never replaced. They were broken as a lot, I believe. Was there another piece we could put in there? Yeah. Instead of removing it, can we put new tire swings up for the same price or, or well, is that another would, option? No, the price would change. Okay. Because that would require more wood chips. Um, <laughs> different retaining wall <laughs> and they also um want to remove the it's like a, a dome with monkey bars on it they want to remove that as well oh isn't that like this is a, a big part of the stance. playground uh, I, well, everything's dangerous right i mean <laughs> <laughs> There's also a. Um... I know. You know how much they paid for that thing? That's why I'm asking. Let's put up a grill. Really? Will we play on the jungle gym? Miracle well, round. we can ask them. Turn around fast. Um... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is the rubber matting yeah, that much more expensive <laughs> to, to, to place to put in? I think so. I think of the rubber matting that's on that, that's by the walk, the, uh, the trail. Mm. That's uh, yeah. and that's that's been there for years, you know. It, All the poured rubber mat. It, 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 I know it's very soft. Yeah. I'm walking on that. It's it's a nice it's a nice cushion. I just I, I would think that'd be ideal and it would be ADA compliant and. Is it equivalent? Yeah. Because down. it's poured into place, it is a lot more expensive. Is it, is that poured? Yeah. Is that what it, okay. That playground is separate from the basketball court, right? The town. Parks and Rec take over the basketball court and the ball fields. Right. And schools, schools responsible the for the playgrounds. Yeah. <coughs> right. We're, we're still talking about JFK. Yeah. So there's a little oh, oh, that, pad yeah. Okay, yeah. of basketball court ish on the other side. Yeah. So the AF Maloney one they consider the fitness playground because it's more of like a fifth grade yep. apparatus. And what's happening over there, Scott? That one is in pretty good shape. The only thing we do have to do is put in a, um, a ramp to make it ADA compliant and add wood chips and do a little edging. But everything is within specs and good shape. That's much. At the JFK, there is a, um, like a metal chain climbing apparatus that's broken. And they're proposing removing that as well. Cause is, is the teeter totter thing that is that gone now? That lost like wasn't there like something with seats? Yeah. God, it's been a little while. My kid's twenty, so. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was something with was seats, three and then two ago. seats, <laughs> two seats came off, and then there were two seats left. I don't think that's Am still I, there. No? I know what you're talking about, but I don't think that's... Was that's, it there? I think so, yeah. All right. I have to go back by there. I'm, like, losing track. Okay. So there it's ramp, wood chips, and edging. Right. On the AFM, which, yeah. And Millville Elementary. The, the Lodge Millville Playground is perfect. Um, they just want to add the wood chips. Add more wood chips, because it's not to that. The preschool kindergarten one on the other side of the building. Um, they're going to remove the piece stone there, add the wood chips, and the slide is not within specs to the fence, so they either got to dig it up and move the slide forward or move the fence back a little bit. It's like two feet out of compliance. And anything that was like residential they consider should be removed there's a plastic teeter totter thing a little playhouse oh oh yeah i think the p uh, the uh, pk teachers brought this stuff out yeah yeah they suggest removing that they can, yeah it could tip over somebody could get hurt and reliable 
This is totally separate from. Uh, I was going to say that's not listed. Is that part of the Millville money? Mm -hmm. What's Which that? part? The twenty-one thousand. The slide. Slide piece. So we don't have preschool listed as a separate item. Is that part of the mill? It's part of the mill. It's part of the mill. Yeah. yeah. It's that's all. It's probably the big chunk of the twenty-one thousand. <laughs> yeah, one building. That's what I was going to ask. Hmm. Anything else in the playground? Do you want to yeah, vote them I, separate at the end, or do you so. want to do? Yeah, I think that's probably better. I'll make a motion to approve to, not to exceed sixty thousand dollars for the yes, listing. Second. Any discussion? Just want to make sure that we verify wood chips are ADA compliant. Yes. Absolutely. Something in writing would be lovely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I think that's part of it. Like, I know that this has been talked about a lot. So yeah. as long as we have something that says 12 inches of wood chips is what gets us where we want to be. Does removing all these items from the JFK leave any About place structures? <laughs> I know. I, I want to drive by there after this. Like, trying to count what's left. <laughs> they say there's more apparatus there than is needed for the amount of students in the building. Who's but that? It's still fun. Uh, John LaRue, <laughs> and uh, he's the owner of um, Co Bill and Greg Smoley. Kids are older there now, too. Is the equipment appropriate for mm -hmm. the third, third, fifth grade on that side? Because that used to be mm -hmm. K through two. Right, yeah. We can ask them to frame off the dome thing separate and put wood chips there. Well, no, Aaron's My question was that oh. the school originally, when the playground was first put in, was K through th three. Yeah, I K to two. K to two, yeah. K to two. Is it and right now it's three through five. So, is are the apparatuses age appropriate for that age group? Yes. And I think the other thing, I mean, that was a the AFM, no, the JFK side, is a donation to the you know town. I think from the. Bebo mm -hmm. family, yeah, right? And Bebo. so I think we also just have to consider before we start removing everything they donated that we, you know, consider that. I mean, I, I don't know that there should is a thing of too much. Yeah, I mean, if it's broken and needs repair, it's a, that's it's a thing, conversation. But I mean, we're not going to just remove it to remove it because it's too much. But that's my opinion. Yeah, I would really like to see like um, where the tire swings were, just some more swings. You know, I, I really think the structures that are up would be able to handle swings and I think for the bigger kids that would be suitable. Well I know on the other on the AFM playground the swings there's always a waiting They're, they wait in line to take turns on the swings. On AFM? On oh, AFM. Yeah. Do yeah. we know what grades are using which side? I, I, no. I think I think, I think I think the third grade uh, based on what the classrooms are going to be I think the third grade is going to be using that the JFK That's side. side. The uh, JFK side. Well, that's good. I've seen a lot of playgrounds that have replaced the tire swings with those big saucers. They, like two two kids can sit on it and it swings back and forth. Oh. And like it's a big saucer thing with the the rope in the middle. The, I mean, the I think thing that's is, what we're calling a tire swing. They used to have. It used to see three, I believe, and they would kind of go in a circle. Yeah. Um, I was part of the BIPO when we um, approved money for the AFM equipment. It is super expensive. I don't remember prices, but I remember that I was like, for that? That's what we're paying for that? <laughs> so, I mean, when we're considering it, it's just a lot of money to, yeah. And we're like, yeah, let's just put something else up. It's, it's not right. that easy. No. <laughs> I, nope. I laughed, Scott, when you said you had to move the slide or the fence two feet. I'm like, yeah, that, he just said that like that was going to be an easy thing. And I'm sure it's like, you know, a two day project. Yeah, they got to dig up the footings for the slide. <laughs> so. Or the footings for the fence. Or the footings for the fence. <laughs> or just bend the fence. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, all in favor of the motion as written for the playground equipment. Aye. Say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Aye. Um, nay? Nays? No nays? No, any abstentions? Okay. And, and that's um, making sure that the wood chips that we're doing across the board are ADA compliant. Absolutely. Okay. okay. The second motion to consider is to move to approve an amount from fiscal year 22 not to exceed $100,000 to repave sections of the middle school driveway. So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? I think is the this? drive up here kind of is the discussion on that one, right? <laughs> <laughs> Exhibit A happened on the way. Scott, do you want to ex do you want Scott to explain what Yeah, what's parts? the process, yeah. So he's um, they're going to redo the whole bottom section. As you know, going down part of the section was redone already. He's going to do the whole bottom section tie into that section as well. Come up the entrance way around to the back and end at the back parking lot at the corner. Yep. Oh, nice. All the way down. And end right at the stop sign coming down the front. So right at that intersection. So it'll be going up the entire. Both sides? Except for the section that was redone already. Okay. Up to that. Up to the corner. Okay. <laughs> I'm very directionally challenged. So. <laughs> Any chats? So the worst part. <laughs> I. So I'm having trouble following you. How much is getting done? So this back parking lot, we've got two sides that's not being touched. Or nope. well, the driveway, the loop in the front. The I'll loop in the front. It's just basically coming straight up the hill to this corner. Well, I'll be no. Yeah, you're pointing over straight here, but I the think... straight driveway. Oh, oh the, yeah, yeah, this is right on the side, the left side. Yep. Oh, yep. Towards the soccer field. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Where all the potholes are. <laughs> are they taking out the old or are they putting over? Taking out the old. They're going to take out the old. They're going to take out um, up to six inches and put new um, compaction soil down. And then is there a timeline on that? Like, are we going to not interfere with any of the activities going on over the summer? Uh, we have to get in touch with them, see when they can do it. Okay. <laughs> it hasn't been approved yet, so. Yeah. Just, I, I think there's a lot going on here, so just might be, I guess, I don't know how many days it takes right. them either, so I have to. A lot of creative scheduling. Squeeze it in. Yeah. <laughs> we had a lot of projects Because right, we only have on. the one end, you know, it's the only one way in, one way out. It's not like you can right. come in another way. Right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Nays? <laughs> Abstentions. And then the third small capital project um, to discuss is to um, move to approve an amount from fiscal year 22 not to exceed $13,000 for repairs and restoration of the sidewalks at the Millville Elementary School. So moved. Second. So that's going to include a new walkway too that comes out the auditorium doors. There's no walkway there. If you remember in the capital planning, there was the picture of just the concrete slabs when you come out the doors. You did. <laughs> I've gone to Millville. I go to Millville for basketball for years, but. Well, the thing is, they're not doors that are general entrance. They're emergency, emergency fire doors. exits. Oh, okay. But if All you right. open the door out and you've got a person yeah. in a, an individual in a wheelchair there's it's a landing but there's then it just drops off to the lawn <laughs> so we want to connect the landing to the sidewalk so that's a safety piece for right and with that just remain an emergency exit entrance. yeah but then it's connected so mm -hmm. that right. if there's an emergency okay. people can safely get sidewalk. needs it Aaron. I was just going to mention these are items that were recommended uh, from the engineer for uh, facilities Further. Were you going to say something else, Aaron? Sorry. No, just pointing out that Greg, Greg's report is what brought all of this to our attention. Yeah. So we appreciate that because it may not have been something that we would have been like, hey, we should fix this sidewalk. 
Right. Right. Yep. Um, and Jason, funding for this? Uh, we'll come out of this. Beginning. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, we'll come out of this fiscal year's budget. This fiscal year. Well, we'll have enough that we'll be able to do a few projects um, like these, and then the, um, the next item to discuss, uh, we'll be able to take care of out of this fiscal year. Okay. Um, all in favor of the improvements on the, of the sidewalks at Millville Elementary School? Aye. 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 Any nays? Abstentions? Thank you. All are approved. Thank you for that. We can get to work on this tomorrow. Um, the uh, next item is on our track and field improvements at our last meeting. Uh, we had talked about uh, Mr. Dutton and I um, meeting at the shed and going through the track equipment, uh, which I'm glad we did. Uh, we spent a good hour to hour and a half going through uh, everything, <laughs> everything that was in there um, and walking the track, looking at um, just the overall facility itself and talking about some of the upgrades that need to be made. And so uh, we came up with a very thorough list. And Scott, you might want to stay there just because yeah. we're going to go to the other things. <laughs> um, but we came up with a very thorough list that you have in your packet, uh, specifically for track and field. Uh, and we did, I did add a softball piece at the end, which we can talk about. Um, but for the track and field equipment, uh, the high jump mats, covers, standards, and crossbar, so a whole new high jump kit. Um, hurdles, um, we have quite a few hurdles that are have in significant disrepair. Uh, we need 40 hurdles. Uh, this actually also comes with the carts to take them out, wheel them out from the sheds. Uh, so these will be brand new. Um, the discus, uh, javelin, uh, were in need of starting blocks. I think the starting blocks are from maybe the 70s, 80s. Uh, they are there. I was just quite amazed uh, by the age of the equipment. Um, so we very much need the starting blocks as well. That also comes, uh, they come on a cart so the kids can wheel them in and out. Um, I should also mention that the discus and jav, javelins uh, will be a big, uh, improvement over the equipment we have and will allow parents to not have to purchase them for their children. Uh, they should not have to do that. Um, and uh, also, before we get to the storage piece, uh, we want to dig out and swap out the sand in the long jump and triple jump pits. Uh, it, if, you, if you ever have jumped, if you, know, you were uh, in that, the field events or your kids do, um, it's quite remarkable to see what our students are jumping into uh, it's like gravel I mean the in check you had to dig like deep to try to get some real soft sand that's actually uh, safe for the kids to be jumping into so um, Scott and I had talked about digging those out and having our guys dig those out and picking up the sand and, and replacing it um, and then the storage uh, we talked a bit about the need for storage so we want some additional storage materials so we can clean up the shed we have and then add two more uh, 10 feet by 12 feet athletic storage units that we could put out there. So we have storage for football and field hockey and track and field and soccer um, and really get things well organized, uh, which I think will be very helpful as we think about uh, coming into our fall season, but also having a new AD. Uh, that'll really help, I think, the individual get a leg up in terms of trying to get some of this work done that needs to happen. This will be kind of a nice um, boost. So uh, I would like to thank Chuck for his help with all of this. Um, I then, well, after going through estimates, brought it back to him to make sure that this made sense. Um, I've never had to order these things before, um, but everything seemed to square with what you thought estimate-wise where we, where we should land. So. Yes, that seems reasonable. It's great. Um, and then I, there, there was a question Tammy, I think you asked the question with the turbo jab. You can see my notes. <laughs> um, uh, Chuck, when we went over the javelins, we had talked about that the girls in the middle school use the same, and then the boys' varsity are different. Is that did I, am I remembering that right? Yes. Okay. Is the is it turbo javelin one of the javelins that's in this order? Or is that something different? It's not in here. Okay. So the turbo jab javelin is only used up to the eighth grade, okay. and they only use that at the state meet. That's they don't can, yeah. use it through the whole year. Except when your kid, well, it just so happens that two of us have kids who throw the jab. So your eighth, your sixth, seventh, and eighth grader 
they do great, they get to states, they have this javelin, they've been practicing yeah. for three years, and then they get to states and they give them this total different thing. It's like playing basketball with a volleyball only during the state game. It's the most yeah. ridiculous thing. But I, at least when Alexa was here, we didn't even have a turbo jav on the premises. So, yeah, so now we, we had have to borrow two. some. Okay. We have two. Okay. They are probably purchased last year. They, okay. they seem fairly new. They're in good shape. Okay. But the, the, the kids should have had more time to practice with those javelins to be better prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Izzy... Didn't yeah, Izzy did at well all year and then got that turbo job in her hand. It was like, it just, it's literally a it's whole this. different just thing. It's a little more practice yeah. time with that turbo job. Or, or they should just throw the same thing that they safely throw at every <laughs> so, other meet, but that's not for today to decide. But, yeah. <laughs> so at the state meet, thing. they have so many kids there. And those seventh, uh, sixth through eighth grade kids, they're careless they'll walk through a crowd with that javelin you know pointing you know they just it's they must have had accidents in the past where they started to use the turbo i mean i or, just think maybe. when they have these when we have like dual valley stuff and there's they like don't have issues no they do the same thing but all of a sudden it's like you go there and it's like this it's just like so bizarre to me that first year i was like what do you even mean like what is that yeah. i mean we learned about it as we got there we had to borrow someone uh, a turbo jab <laughs> is a, a so a regular jab yeah, might be version. five or six feet long and the turbo jab is only three feet long and it's shaped different like it's a little almost torpedo like, it's yeah, almost like, like a, a nerf thing. it's got a yeah. blunt end it's mm -hmm. not a pointy end it's rubber like a rubber <laughs> it's like a, gi a giant nerf ball yeah, it's a totally different piece of like, equipment than they practice with to get to stay. Play Everything girls basketball, the boys ball. Do the MIA yeah, it's heavier. do this? So yeah, it's the most. But I. But when Alexa was here, we didn't have one. So yeah. when we went through this list, I asked Jason, "Do we have a turbo jab? Because if we don't, we should." Yeah. Because these so, poor kids are like working so hard, and they get there, and it's like. They give them this it's thing like going seen. from the old lawn dots that we grew up with Bad to the jobs. new ones that are around yeah, the world. Like, I don't know. I, still have a set of them. I just wanted to make sure we had some Worth because money. there's a reason why we can't play with those anymore. <laughs> they work. Yeah. They work hard to get there. So I'm happy that we have two Chuck. Thank you. <laughs> and so um, that's the first part of the track and field. Uh, that's the track and field part of the. Um, <coughs> Uh, we also, uh, Scott and I had a conversation about looking at replacing the top three inches and creating a new infield for our softball uh, team. Um, you've seen it. I, you, I mean, visibly you can see it's hard as a rock. That needs to be dug out and replaced. Um, so we could do that for 15500 So the total for the track and field improvements are 36650 and then the softball infield is 15,500. Collectively, it's 52,150. So I don't know if you want to do separate motions, or if you want to just do it in one, one group and... Aaron? Did you want to say, Aaron, I feel like when you unmute, you want to say something, so. <laughs> no? No, it's okay. Okay. Um, what was I, I was gonna ask? Is there, uh, Scott, is there anywhere, like, so where there's, you know, three inches of sand on the entire infield and then all the sand, is, do we need sand anywhere, like, to repurpose that, or are we filling any holes anywhere? The problem is it's clay, okay. so when it gets wet, it holds the moisture in, and that's okay. why the girls complain that it's hot all the time. Okay. So is there a specific, know. we know what is supposed to go there? Yeah, door edge is supplying okay. the appropriate infield mix. Okay. That's why it's so expensive. expensive. It's infield mix. Okay. And that holds up for a few years? Yeah, that's what they used on the boys' field when they redid it. Um, all on, oh, sorry. I'm yes. on the motion to approve Thank you, the, Dan. Uh, 52,150 for all the items described. Second. Thank you. Motion made by Dan, seconded by Aaron Z. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? Perfect. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Scott and Jason and Chuck, for doing some legwork here. Yeah, that's cool. Um, next, we are going to move to our facilities report. Uh, Scott, you want to give our facilities update? 
sir. You have a great I don't know. <laughs> I thought I was doing a capital and you were doing a facility. Oh, I can do facility support. It's fine. Yeah, I didn't have it in front of me. Okay. But no I'll problem. chime in. Yeah, no, no problem. So in your packet, you have the uh, overview of uh, the facilities <coughs> update. Um, at the high school, I'm not going to sit and read these to you. Uh, you can see them. But at the high school, uh, we did were able to take care of the two heating coils. Um, there is a change to the amount. Um, we had a quote from Riverdale Plumbing. We thought it was going to be around 9,800. Actually, uh, came in at 7,660. So it was a little bit less. 7,860. 7,860. Thank you. Um, so a little bit less than we thought, which is good. Um, Save some money there. Uh, the work out, uh, the work on the dugouts uh, is continuing. However, we did set a deadline for those to be done by July 30th. So all of that work will be done and completed by uh, the end of the uh, end of July. Um, you will be happy to hear that the tennis courts are done. So please go play in them. I have pictures. <laughs> it's really true. It, they look really, really nice. Um, we do have uh, one new net, but we're going to order. So if you look at it, we've got three courts. Two of the three, the nets look great, like, you know, real shiny white, bright white uh, netting. The third is fine, but the bottom of the net's ripped, and it looks real dingy. So since we just upgraded everything, it's a couple hundred bucks. Scott and I priced them yesterday. We'd like to buy a new net so that all three have brand new nets. It looks mint. It looks really good. They did a nice job. Yeah. And from Tennis Tennessee, Colin donated ball. one of the nets. And the spring. spring. The spring. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Do those stay up year round? The nets do, yes. Yeah, I think they so. Do. Yes, I don't think we take them down. No. We allow access, right? Are well, they supposed to get facilities requests? Um, no, we leave them open. I don't think we ever have, yeah. No. Nope. I was just nope. wondering that. But so it, just leave them on lock. I can put a camera pointing on them anyway, so that yep. in case there's vandalism. Is there oh. any benefit in taking them in before we get our first snow? Oh, yes, we take them in in oh, the winter right. time. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Exciting, thank you. Yes, they look great. <laughs> um, the asbestos work is going to begin at the high, uh, at the high school the first week of July. Um, and we're in the process, you might remember the Blackstone Green Communities Grant we had talked a little bit about. Uh, so we're starting the process there of installing the LED uh, lighting uh, that we need to do. And that's a good thing. Hopefully that'll do some cost savings on the, on the other end on our electric uh on our utilities so all of jfk is if i may chime in yes. all of jfk is being retrofitted with led lights um they'll change the fixes if they have to if not if they can get away just changing the bulbs or doing that the high school is going to be done in three phases and this is just going to be the first phase this year that's all the money they had with the grant they're also doing the fire stations and town hall i believe so. it's a good step in the right direction it is yeah it didn't cost us anything yep do they change the ballast with those, if they just change the lamps with LED? It depends on the light fixture. Yeah. If it's a T8 or a T12, or, we don't have T12s. No, we don't have T12s anymore. They're all T8s. You mentioned JFK and the high school. What about middle school and MES? It wasn't part of the grant. Okay. The grant was done through the town of Blackstone. Right. Okay. Yeah, they targeted those facilities. Yeah. And exterior lighting also? Or, uh... No, the high school was retrofitted already with LEDs. Um, this building was not, which I could use. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the asbestos work at the high school, is that um, the band and anybody else using that, that will be yeah. separate? Because I know the band is everywhere. We were just talking I, about okay. that yesterday, yeah. So I already talked with Mr. Schaefer mm -hmm. and um, and the consultant from UEC. And they're gonna focus on the band corridor right away so that hopefully it doesn't interrupt with band camp. There may be one night of practice they may have to cancel or Tuesday or Thursday night, and that's it. And Todd already knows, Todd knows that. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. Uh, since we're on the asbestos topic, we are starting, the, as you can see, with the, if you move down to the complex, we'll come back to the middle school in a second, but we're starting the, um, the asbestos tile removal in the kitchen, and that's actually Monday, beginning Monday, I think. Yeah. Right? So that work is, uh, is underway as well. And then at the middle school, we already installed, uh, actually it's 15, uh, Scott bargained a free camera in there, so it was, uh, we got an extra camera in uh, throughout the building. 
He, did, so. he made the mistake of telling me his son was coming up next year, so. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Sorry, take Mark. the kids an extra game. So they're out. So the cameras are all throughout the building. Perfect. Yeah. So awesome. that's done. It's good. It's once you get the 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 main system in, it's easy to wire in. We yeah. we've added them every year as we went. Once we the heavy lift was getting the system in. Right. And from there, it was everything's pre-wired. Yep. He's also thrown in three metal bifolding gates, one to be put up at the high school kitchen so that the girls can open the door and let fresh air in in the summer and the other two are going to go underneath our stairwells over here where students can hide out of the camera site <laughs> so they won't be able to get into it so they won't be able to yeah. hide from yeah. the camera oh, I was like, it's almost like a makeshift <laughs> I was like, oh, you're putting up a yeah. screen so they can hide i don't know yeah. and hide. the custodians can use it for extra storage and storage yeah oh, gotcha. and the screen at the at the high school will allow the so to keep it secure and safe so you can't get in but it will allow the opportunity for them to keep the door open to get the fresh air in there they don't have any windows. So. Perfect. Uh, that concludes our facilities report. Um, and then there are two, um, our facilities update, and then there are two other uh, items that we need um, the committee to approve. They're just surplus. Uh, the first was at MES. We had a storage unit that uh, the items within the unit uh, had some pretty significant damage. Um, and interesting, the only thing that was requested that we replace was a set of teacher mailboxes. The rest of it, it seemed as though the, this, uh, most of this was teacher materials uh, that needed to be stored as a result of three feet and six feet and, you know, those feet and these feet because of COVID. So this, uh, when we were starting to unload the materials, the teachers didn't need these items. We left them in the unit. And then when we went in to empty them out, they were pretty damaged. So we, uh, we only need to replace, I think, one thing on here, uh, one item on here, which is the mailboxes. Um, and um, the rest of it is uh, just, we just need to get rid of it. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Yeah, to uh, the dumpster, is that? Yeah, we'll have to get a dumpster. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nays. Anyone abstaining? Motion passes. Perfect. And then our health offices, we have a surplus there that uh, we need your approval to get rid of as well. Uh, the vision screeners that we have are upwards of 10 years old. They're not calibrated. It's not recommended that we even use them anymore for vision screening. We're back to the old cover the eye what can you read on the line <laughs> chart test believe it or not that is how we're doing vision screen that is a recommended uh screening now so interesting how that kind of pendulum swings um so uh karen young is asking that we um the committee uh, allow us to uh, unload these motion to approve second motion made by tara seconded by Kerry. all in favor aye aye, aye. 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 Any nays? Any abstentions? The motion is approved. Concludes the facilities report. School committee forum. Would we like to share? Okay. Okay. I have something. I'm just going to get to the part. Um, Jason, I know when you and I talked, uh, we had briefly spoke about getting in touch with uh, Mr. Schaefer um, to see if there were needs for the band since we were in the position that we're in um, of ending the year and we're able to make the sports um, athletic purchases. I'm going to guess we probably didn't have enough time to do that, so I'm wondering if we should earmark some money before uh, before our next meeting, just so he would have the opportunity to do that. So Aaron, let me just clarify, you're asking if we should earmark money to support some improvements in the area of band and let Mr. Schaefer decide what it should be used for after this meeting? 
Um, we need to earmark the money, and I think the, the, the ask could go backwards to Jason. But if we don't do it before June 30th, then that money would roll over into E&D. Um, and I, I, I don't know if Ron's gone, um, but yes. I believe the, the amount we're predicted to end the year with, uh, is we, we should definitely do something like that, um, like we were just able to do for athletics. Do you have any idea what he's in need of? Well, program. I know we need two biz. <laughs> oh, okay. well, we got I think we need two I think it was twelve. I, I did see an email. Covered. Yeah. Oh, we got twelve new tubas. I think it was twelve. I'd have to look at the email. From again. the little fundraiser they did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, um, Aaron, do you have donation from um, from alumni for the tubas? We had purchased the the one major one that they needed for marching band, and they are getting some smaller tubas um, donated. Um, they use them, believe it or not, um, several in each building. You know, middle school has, shares tubas, the high school bands share tubas, and then there are marching in tubas. I'm sure that's not what he's going to ask for. <laughs> Do you have an amount you would like us to consider? Um, I, I would think we should say somewhere in the range of... Um, what we just did for athletics. Um, I think athletics only covered two, right? It was track and field and softball, but um, band is throughout all of our buildings. So I I think I'd be comfortable in like a forty to forty five thousand dollar range for that program. But it's not just marching band. That would that would cover fourth grade through high school in our classrooms in our extracurricular activities um, but our classrooms are covered by our budget right so for more equipment well the music, instruments, instruments used are intertwined into i'm going to assume if, you know if there are needs that he wouldn't have ever asked for in a yearly budget that this would be above and beyond that this isn't you know, spend it this year for what you ask for next year, because typically they don't ask for the big things. And this is any department because we're usually strapped. Um, honestly, Tammy, it could be like a piano that would be used in the classrooms. That would be something, uh, I believe a few years ago, they, they did ask for one and then one got donated. So I'm just giving an example. I honestly don't know what his needs would be. I'm just saying that we should probably earmark that money beforehand. And if he has, if he's asked, and if he has a list, then that money would be available to him. If it's not, then it would roll into E and D. So you're recommending uh, forty-five thousand. Is that what I heard you say? That. Yes, yeah, so I'll make a motion to earmark $45,000 for our music um, budget to be, I would say, items to be approved by Jason for a purchase. Is there a second? I'll second so we can discuss it. Discussion? Is I don't know. I feel like this opens up a can of worm. I, I don't know. Because then, does, so then does the science department say, mm -hmm. we didn't have anything earmarked. We would like to update this. Then I'm sorry. I just can't yeah, you hear. Have to talk, you have to talk louder. Erin, I'm just concerned that earmarking money like that for a future wish list that they might tell us they have opens us up to like the science department saying, well, they, you know, would have had this wish list. The math department then has this wish list. I just yeah, don't... I actually agree with that. Um, is that Terry? Sorry. Yeah. Yes. I, the only reason I'm saying band is because those are the extra Those are yeah. athletics and band are extracurricular activities that touch all of our kids, right? Yep. Obviously, if there's a curriculum need, Jason brings that to us immediately. Um, 
and I, I don't even, I hate to even use the word wish list because I know that what was just brought for track and field is, is no, yeah. sincerely long overdue. I am certain that band has the same thing of long overdue items, but would never ask. And uh, the only reason I'm saying band and not science or not math or not, you know, uh, even the teacher position, it's a one-time purchase and it's, it is the, it is the other extracurricular activity that touches hundreds of students. Mm -hmm. so that's why I'm, that, that's where my ask is coming from in that, in that sense. Okay. Um, I wish, I think you know, we definitely could have done this better and gotten to Mr. Schaefer ahead of time. Um, but I don't think we got the information from Ron on where we predict to end the year um, until... Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> so I just think it, it, uh, it does look a little backwards, but I think it's important that we consider that, you know, because of the amount of kids that it would touch. And these are, these are the two departments, athletics and music, where we cut first anytime there's a cut. They have gone without, they have, they have taken away. They, I mean, it's very uncommon to, to be able to say to them, what do you need? Um, able to do as, that? As without opposed to, sorry, we can't do that. Knowing the items? If, if, oh, yeah. If, if I may, so uh, I, I, <clears throat> meeting with, with the superintendent, at the 11th hour, I'd say yesterday mm -hmm. afternoon. And that was one of my, um, I was in full support of what was being proposed. And I know it was the last minute, so um, I also questioned if there were any needs um, mm. with instruments yeah, I, as well. I did too. I did too. Okay. Yep. So uh, just in my experience, um, I may be able to offer this, the committee a solution that, so this is, it, the, 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 the motion is very vague. Um, but I don't know if the superintendent would have the opportunity between now and some point. If we, uh, because it's not an agenda item and, the, and voting on an amount like this on, on a non-agenda item may, may, may potentially jam us up. But if the superintendent can get a, to have a discussion with Mr. Schaefer, mm -hmm. and even if we had to schedule a meeting for the end of next week just to address this one issue, uh, even could be done possibly on on zoom i think would be because uh, by the way it's my understanding that that which we need to would need to do this before the end of the fiscal year which would be before july 1st yes yeah right, by so next that's week why i would yeah. recommend by next week well in the, by next week not only do we have to make the committee would need to make a decision but we actually have to have it then, ordered and encumbered uh, okay not the just requisition has oh yeah no the requisition has to be done and in our accounting system otherwise when our auditors come to review everything, they're gonna take, whatever whatever you all decide, if it's not encumbered, ordered and encumbered by the 30th, they're gonna actually move it back uh, into the into the, the current fiscal year, which will take from money that we didn't, we weren't gotcha. intending on spending. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. So we would That's have to do, tight timeline. we just would have to do it swiftly. Yeah. So what is our best way to do this? I'm pretty sure Todd room. could probably give you an answer tomorrow. <laughs> he's probably got, he probably, he's probably he, got this he's in his head, right? He's probably listening <laughs> right now. Well, I, the other thing I was thinking was, and we don't have that with us, but there were asks that we said no to at the beginning of the budget process, but, and I assume that those would have been priority items that he did put them in the budget process, but again, we can't speak to them on the fly. Those yeah. items that were rejected... What, so at the beginning of the budget process, we had every department came to us and they gave us a list of asks, you know, that they needed these things. But during that process, we say, no, we're not adding that. We're not adding that. We can't afford that or whatever. And so there are, I'm, I'm assuming every department had has, things has that they asked priorities. that yeah. we said at that time we couldn't do. But, you know, we don't have that material with us to say, oh, we said no to this. You know, right? But I would like you. I think you're saying Mr. Schaefer probably has that list. Oh, like, and the, he absolutely does. Yeah, like say. or like everyone's saying. I think if he didn't ask for a piano, but has needed a piano for five years, if we have the money for it now, right. this could be the time. Right. Well, and I'm just going like the track and field equipment was not asked for. It's definitely need, but it was not brought to us. 
So there are certainly items in other extracurricular activities that would fall under that same umbrella. Right. Yeah, and the only reason that we're able to do any of this is because we had we had vacancy savings and then we had salary savings Correct. and replacement. Costs. And we have the ESSER funds that we were able to use throughout this year yep. um, to cover money. other expenses, expected expenses. Right. Yep. Yeah, so I guess if we can get answers from Mr. Schaefer tomorrow or Monday, I think otherwise to, <laughs> to get the orders placed, right? <laughs> yeah, but I think, to, uh, Dan, to your point, um, you know, we do have the items listed on this agenda are those reasonably anticipated and I think this is an item that came up because of what we talked about and the fact that we're on the timeline um, so I think we're I, I feel like we're okay there Aaron but you're yeah I do you're too. the real That's chair why we have committee. <laughs> yeah. on the pretend committee chair. forum is it, it it is for things like that um, you know or otherwise unanticipated but this is kind of piggybacking off of the, the agenda items. Um, I do think we're okay with making a motion at committee forum. It's definitely been sent on in the past. And based on our timeline of June 30th, and as Jason just mentioned, the actual orders being placed, I think it's, it's important that we do it tonight. I think the school, uh, the band is so important to the school and, um, it just it's worth the investment and we have that money available it probably won't be uh, like this again uh, it's rare You're probably that this happens correct. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. right so Certainly i think rare. i think to dan's point it's making sure that the motion is sort of pretty clear so aaron do, can you repeat what you how you want to word that motion just so we are we're clear on what we're voting for. Sure. So I will make a motion that we earmark up to $45,000 for the music program uh, for orders to be placed before June 30th, um, approved through Grinson. Approved through Jason. Well, I'm just saying that because you, you have, we have a detailed list of the track and field items we, no no i just i'm just, sure I'm just trying to write what you're happen. saying i wasn't questioning it. i was just repeating it so i could write it Perfect. through through the superintendent okay all in favor right because we already we're in the second on that you have to withdraw oh, the we have first to with sorry, withdraw the first motion the first second and then create a new motion so okay. she'd have to withdraw her first motion I think she just, she just clarified it. I think it was the same motion. Clarifying. Just, clar right, so just clarifying. Yeah, I mean, I think as we work through it, I is. think we realized we had to be a little. Okay, so. <laughs> so this is, so just so I can understand the motion. So this is to allow up to, a mo up to a amount not to exceed 45000 and to give Jason the authority to expend based on his communication with Mr. Schaefer. For band equipment, specifically for band, band equipment. Band, yes. Todd will probably have an email in your inbox. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Dan. That is the that okay. is the motion. The earmark up to forty five thousand uh, to purchase band equipment. Um, orders to be placed before June thirtieth, approved through the superintendent. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nays? Nay. 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 If I could clarify, I'm not, I'm in very support of the marching band. I just, I'm not just for show the process. I just, I, I have to agree. I'm, I'm just not comfortable. But, but I'm, I don't know enough enough. Enough about it. We'll just draw this there. It's tough being thrown at the last second. I felt like I was uh, approaching with the track equipment kind of at the last minute and then not to have any information. It is a tough vote. 
but I don't want to shortchange the the band after supporting the track program. I just so want it's to... tough. I wish we had more information and we, we could all feel more comfortable. Yeah. I think that the challenge is the timeline mm -hmm. and the, the yeah. fact that we have to order it in less than seven days. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I just wanted to clarify voting because I tried to write as people were talking. But um, Aaron, you were a, a yay, a yes. I would assume because you brought it up. Yes, yeah, I am. <laughs> Tara, you were yes. yes. Oh, you have this already? I wrote it. Yep. I say yes. Okay. Carrie? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. And Dan, Chuck, and Ted were no's. I had voted oh, yes. Yes, sorry. That's why I wanted to confirm because I had people written. So the motion passes. Did you, have, did you get Aaron Z? Yep. Oh, Aaron Z. I'm sorry, Aaron. She was a yes, but I had her as a six. Oh, yes, six I did have two. her here. Can we be provided the detailed list? Yes. After it's finalized with, as I, I bet Todd is already ty typing his email. <laughs> like I said, I mean I do know that there were things that were there and we didn't approve, right, but we, we back. don't have a chance to look at that. I just feel um, like it's shortchanging the extracurriculars. If we're Jason, gonna... will you reach out to him tomorrow? Just I'll, to make sure I'll, I'll call him on the way home. I just couldn't, I just, it wasn't humanly possible to get to it before this meeting. I'm <laughs> um, sure, I know. It was but I can, I can do it on the, I, no. it's okay. I can do it on the way home. Aaron, do you have anything for community forum? Aaron, Thank you very much. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Um, yeah, I just wanted to provide an update from the last meeting. So um, Ted and I took an action item after hearing the um, details from Sarah about the special education donations and the shoe collection boxes um it was stated in her in her presentation that millville didn't respond so therefore there was no boxes put out in millville um, we have cleared that up with the board of selectmen they in fact did vote on putting the boxes out they all said yes there was a break in communication um and which delayed the putting out of the boxes but they were put out um two weeks ago yeah okay. and so they're at town hall i think there's the one at the town hall and one at the fire station yes yeah okay thank you for that and we're also looking into including millville in on the um, autism police badges Chuck, anything for school committee forum? No. I would just say there's a, uh, before our next meeting, there's a, the, char uh, the Charger football golf tournament next Saturday. That I, that I will be digging oh, holes on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> <She will. laughs> Which golf course is that? Uh, Crystal Lake, I believe, Crystal in Lake. Boroughville. Yeah. All right. July one, a week July from one. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, they have cornhole too, don't they? I think that was like last I just saw another... I believe I saw that too. Cornhole yeah. is coming up. Or... Maybe this I weekend. Been... Oh, was it last? This past weekend, I believe. Okay. Um, any anyone else for community forum? Uh, school committee forum. Sorry. Upcoming meetings: July eleventh, uh, at six p.m. at the Hartnett Middle School. Um, motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Dan. Second. Ted, the second. All in favor? All, All in favor. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. You don't even have to ask for nays. <laughs> yeah, no nays. Nays, uh, abstentions.